This is about an Ashes of Creation video. Uh, people have been asking me about watching this for a couple of days now. I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to look at it. We're going to go through it. Here we go. Settle down, my brothers. It has been a long and arduous month, I agree. This really kind of reminds me how I feel whenever I start my stream. The silence has been deafening. But fear not, my brothers and sisters, high on the copium. Mm. This holy grail has been in development for many years. But I will willingly give myself to summon our Lord to give us a crumb of information once again. Hear me, Stephen Sharif. Hear my prayers. I willingly give you my flesh. So now, with that being- This has better CGI than She-Hulk does. This is impressive. Wow. Said, we shall show you the new world map. Okay. And all its 1,200 square kilometer glory. All right, let's see it. I'm ready. Hey, what up, boys? Hi. So, what a fantastic live stream once again. At the start, I was certainly debated by their slight restructure, and as the concept segment was concluding, my soul had all but left my body. Is the volume good? Today, I want to discuss the massive changes made to the Ashes of Creation world map, the new okay. mechanics involving their PvP, and discuss the reasons behind this change. But before we get into that, my patrons and I would love for you to grab yourself. That's a long <laughs> list of people. God damn. Cola because Congrats to the him. topics discussed this month were glorious. It's only the first day, and I've already milked this live stream for eight planned videos my god this feels like a gift specifically for my autistic skills and i'm excited to bring you eight actual relevant informational videos this month instead of talking straight out of my ass that's what i do well yeah I know that's I that's all i do regardless but at least we got clickbait titles to go with it this time now with all that bollocks out of the way Let's begin. All right, let's do it. We? With Ashes of Creation's map tripling in size to 1,200 okay. kilometers squared, our perception of this highly anticipated yep. MMO has been completely turned on its head. Vera was already boasting to be one of the largest playable spaces at launch of an MMO, being similar in size to Arcage. However, now they've tripled that, it's looking to be one of the largest. MMORPGs in history full stop. There's a lot That's of important big. information we can garner from this change. First of all, the, the thing is to me, like, I just, I want to make sure that if that's the case, if you triple the size of the map, you probably have to at least double the size of the, uh, of the maximum people that can be on a server. You know what I mean? Like, you've got to have a big server full of a lot of people. They confirmed that the changes themselves are in service of fleshing out the ocean gameplay, making 750 kilometers squared of this massive increase purely to do with the open waters, and the other 450 to 480 yeah. being focused on land. If we compare this to the original information, where the playable area in total was around 480 kilometers squared, including water, it seems that the land itself has been increased by maybe 50 to 70 percent according to my own internal calculations something for like that sure and distance during alpha one but obviously we don't know for sure as the old map was mere concept anyway aka vaporware and alpha one was well it was alpha one now i know yeah. steven said that the land size itself hasn't changed however this was quite obviously a slight misspeak on his behalf so please Bruh. morons in my discord please stop bringing this up there's only so many of you I can ban in one day. Which means ah, he's been that watching my stream. Spaces, if you want to come and join, guys, the link for that is in the description below. 
The focus here though was increasing the distance between the continents, something I personally was highly concerned about but am now jerking myself off to because it opens up the ocean to be what it's supposed to be, a vast expanse of water with mountains of waves 50 feet high and the dangers from the depth lurking below as you yeah i think having a like a large ocean element of the of the game is really important to making it feel like it's a real world i i know like valheim it really added a lot of scope to it so yeah this is something i'm really excited about you can probably tell i'm very excited about this change they also mentioned the addition of a few bays for coastal gameplay likely yeah. meaning fishing harbors and a short travel trade pack to the two new islands added to the northwest and southeast but this is better served to talk about later okay. alongside this massive reveal we also got a significant portion of the names for continents biomes and oceans north being the umbral sea east being the Avaric ocean south being the trade wind sea and west being the fortunic ocean and okay. apologies if i've mispronounced any of them uh, i'm quite literally working for free so expect the lowest of efforts yeah Then we have the four major land masses. Illyrium being the eastern continent. Hey, that's a good name, isn't it? Hosting a plethora of diverse biomes. A deep mountainous tundra, the frost grave fells, some swamps, diverse forests, and the Palagora being the name of its coastal island down south. To the west, we have the Vandergar continent. The one we are most familiar with as it hosts the Riverlands, the Sand Squall Desert, the Badlands, as well as the yet to be seen Jundark and Dunsenkel Mountains. Towards the north of Vandergar, we also have another newly added coastal island, the Soljama. This is like Soldier Northrend? Soljama nuts! <laughs> Got him! <laughs> but arr, there be one more island, one uncharted land, What's full it? of intrigue and mystery, a place surrounded by the Umbral Sea, and we heard not a peep from this place. <laughs> the Drakath Boar is a dangerous place, but it's plunder. Oh, it's plunder be plenty. <clears throat> Actually, we have no idea what this place is about, as Stephen proceeded to ignore its existence, but... I hope that they do something crazy with the ocean. Like, one day they put out a patch, and they add an island that's, like, over here. And it's not on the map. And they just say, we just added something really big into the game. And one day, somebody will find it. I think that would be fucking badass. Like, I, I think at a certain point, yeah, it's like, if that's so small, no, I, I don't know really how big it is because like, I haven't played the game. So, like, I'd have to really see what it's like. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, because you want to have, doesn't work with the internet. It doesn't have to. The thing is, it's not a mystery forever. It's just something that's special and cool and people can share in the... Uh, exploration of that's all yeah I think that's cool Drakath Boar is the last some remaining asshole data named yeah, island, and as it is named, it probably has some significance in the world of Vera. Tulnar ties, a raid, maybe even an elite dragon <laughs> island that only the most Giga of Giga Chads can farm. That's for With the reveal of this map, the theories and baseless speculation is running rampant, and I will, of course, do mm -hmm. my best to herd all of this into one location where we can just forget reality for a moment, forget how far away Alpha 2 is, and just suck in the copium and immerse ourselves with theory crafting about these locations. Okay. This, of course, will be coming in the next video. Come on, guys. Did you really think I wasn't going to milk this month for all it's worth? We were also blessed with context around movement speed and the size of biomes, continents, yeah, and Yeah, like nodes, how long does it take to go from like one site to another? The footage in the background here is something that 
most of you should be familiar with. Yes. The Wetlands. I played this game and before. This is by no means representative of Ashes of Creation's scale or running speed. Mm -hmm. It does, however, give you a solid representation of distance. Right. Steven did confuse the situation here a little by switching between mounted speed and running speed, so I will only be explaining this in the context of running. No mounts, okay. no gliding, just running. No so mounts. We can relate it to the footage in the background. To move Got across it. a metropolis, Ashes of Creation's max level node, from wall to wall, it takes 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Pretty damn long, but I think most of the space within these metropoli will be mostly housing. Kind of like how yeah. Black Desert Online has their housing scattered throughout the streets and alleyways of their nodes. Except in Ashes of Creation's case, these houses are not instanced. The important piece of information that we received That's during cool. this was the distance between nodes. That being the space in between cities that will be filled with resources and content. This is said to be three and a half minutes of pure running, which doesn't seem like a lot, I agree. However, again, to reference the footage in the background, uh, that's a lot of actual physical space, so it's not as small as you think it is in the context of a game. Finally, we got the reveal of the time it would take to run from the top of a single continent all the way to the bottom, putting us that's at good. a nice and tidy 75 minutes. Quite the distance, and it escapes me- 75 minutes to run from the top to the bottom of the continent. I feel like it would take longer to do that in WoW. I, I, I feel like it would. I don't know. It's a lot longer in WoW. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's not mounted as well. Looks like you got to test it. There, no. How long it takes to run across Kalimdor or Eastern Kingdom, so feel free to let me know in the comments for comparison. Yeah, I'm not this sure. This goes without saying, but the 75 minutes is calculated in a straight line. The oh. geometry and biome borders will probably affect okay. this dramatically, oh, okay. as Stephen did mention how the Underrealm acts as a way around natural choke points. The next major topic Stephen touched on that in relation sense. to this new world map is, of course, the expanded oceans, a part yeah. of this game that excites me beyond belief because I am indeed a closet die-hard One Piece nerd who wants to live that pirate fantasy. So if anyone calls me a weeb, I will immediately ban you. I haven't started playing this map One Piece reveal, yet. We also got the news that the sea outside of the coastal areas is now an open PvP zone, free from the confines of corruption. A great change. In fact, one of the best pieces of news we've heard for a while, and I yeah, I'm curious to see how that's gonna go. Like, I mean, this looks really cool. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, yeah, this looks really fucking cool. Like, whenever I'm watching two galleons fighting out in the open sea with no land in sight, that's badass, man. Cannot wait to talk this is about RPG, the ocean's yes, I know lands. That However, says because that of this change, it has raised a lot of concerns See. when it comes to traversing between the continents. And it's perfectly understandable that some players might not want to risk themselves in a wieldy-like zone, similar to RuneScapes, just to explore the world. It's easy for PvP-focused players to just say, well, don't play the game then, but that's not how this highly anticipated MMO is going to thrive, is it? Steven put these concerns to rest, though, by elaborating in the comments. I would like to point out that whilst the open seas will be open PvP zones, there are still alternate methods for travel between the two continents, including flight paths yeah. between coastal nodes, airships between metropoli, and also a like scientific nodes like the vassal boats. network teleportation options. However, none of these methods will allow for the transit of materials or gatherables. I just want to interject here because I found this rather interesting and I'm not entirely sure this has been done in an MMORPG before. You boomers will have to inform me in the comments on that one as I am a WoW fiend. I'm not sure. I think that like most time, yeah, it's... It, it, it's very hard for me to say. I think that it's a very delicate line between trying to have systems like this and then handicapping players in order to create a necessity for those systems to exist. And I think this is something that, like, whenever the game actually is playable and people are able to go through it and see what's actually happening in it, then we'll get a better idea. 
So if you're a solo player, you're fucked. Yeah, like that's one of the things, right? Or like you could pay somebody to take it there for you or, or something like that. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be other ways to do it after all so i didn't get to explore other mmorpgs before uh -huh. and around the time of world of warcraft's rise this kind of mechanic actually reminds me a lot of valheim a game i value highly as it proves that the passion yeah, for small user. indie dev teams are still capable of taking the gaming genre by storm oh yeah I digress as much I as love i'd valheim. love to discuss ashes of creation boasting a lot of survival-esque mechanics i think we need to wait a little while longer and learn. i think survival mechanics can be good but they can also just be tedious like i remember whenever we were playing raft mcconnell and i were playing raft we were just constantly like i was constantly thinking oh i need food oh i need water oh i need food i need water it's like oh my god it's annoying more about Ashes of Creation's innovations in this genre they can't take away before from the game. I can yeah. confidently clickbait you with that kind of title. Steven continued, further explaining the ocean traversal. There will be healthy amounts of sea content within the coastlines of the continent yeah, that awesome. do not fall within the open sea areas. It is important that the open seas represent the reward and opportunity that cross-continental trade provides, but also the riches of treasure that the sea offers. Like, I'll tell you guys if if i had seen this game whenever it came out i would have played this game all day every single day this looks fucking badass it's all come with risk and danger oh it's all great stuff that fleshes out a lot of important distinctions between the mechanics that solidify intrepid's intent for their open world which leads us nicely onto the next segment this change although expected was far larger than anticipated so i wanted to take the time to discuss the impact these changes will have on alpha 2 discuss why these changes were made and the importance of density for an mmorpg yeah but why the change this late in development? It is fairly concerning that something this big is happening so late in development, right? I think that they probably planned this all along, but they didn't really have... They weren't sure if it would be out on release. And maybe, like, because of Unreal 5, they were able to develop it in like a much more procedural way which was able to like develop more of it faster i think that's definitely possible i'm not sure though well no not really this has clearly been in the works for a long time like all the way back when alpha one shut down as they had a large portion of time at the end of 2021 where steven quite literally couldn't explore and that was probably because that world no longer existed however there's no denying the yeah. concerns there's a word that's been creeping around a lot since this incredible reveal. A word that scares a lot of people. What's that? And one that I shall utter only once. Be warned, for it will forever be embedded into your mind. Mute now if you do not wish to be cursed. Click off this video if you do not wish to have your faith shaken. Unsubscribe if you lack resolve. For that word, that word be stone creep that's two words yeah it's two words it's not one word scope creep yep it's two words S steven no 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 I, I didn't mean to Stephen. So let's talk about the reasoning behind this change then. Density is an important aspect of an MMORPG. When worlds feel empty and it's nothing but flat grasslands and sparse forests everywhere, it's hard to feel immersed into the universe. I yeah. think New World did a fantastic job with this because every inch of Eternum was packed with high levels of detail and life. Granted, most of that was copy-pasted corporate churnout, but it was effective nonetheless. Very I, I would agree with that. I, I, I would very much agree with that. I think that New World did a very good job of being a large, expansive world that you could really feel, you know, like you, you could feel immersed into. I, I, I think that was actually very valuable. 
however, is 10 times larger than New World. That is an insane- It has to be though, keep this in mind. It has to be because New World doesn't have mounts. Same amount of land mass in comparison. So let's take a moment to consider the work required to create a world that feels just as alive- and It's also like, keep in mind, like the way he's doing this, like you also have areas in the water that have their own, uh, you, you know, its own specific value as New Worlds did, but without the copy-pasting. There are obviously a few mechanics in place here that make Ashes of Creation vastly different, considering a large portion of this MMORPG is purely sandbox elements. This includes space for player freeholds, significant space for node boundaries, and locations for content to dynamically spawn as nodes progress. This change was supplemented okay. by reducing the sure. total planned node locations down from 103 to 85. And the goal here is not to reduce the amount of content, it's actually to free up enough space to actually fit in the content they have planned. It feels like the team are actually bringing the game together in a way that makes sense and works for their current iteration. I genuinely believe that Intrepid are in their final stages of piecing their world together. It feels like this game is ramping faster and faster. It feels like Intrepid are smack bang in the middle of their stride. Now deliver- I would agree with that because it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, the game, like we first started covering this game two years ago. And so two years and, and like it was already being developed at that point and there was already a vision and a foundation there. Like, I, I think that, yeah, you're going to really start seeing things, uh, you know, take form. And uh, I, I think so. Is Rain make us what, what tastes good? I, I think to me, I just want to see the game whenever it comes out. Like, most of the things that I've heard about the game, and pretty much everything, actually, has been very positive. I think people are reflexively negative because they don't think that it's... Go they don't think the team will be able to... Uh, th they will be able to, like, execute on their ideas. But I feel like there are very few people that think that the ideas put forth by Ashes of Creation are bad. It's just people are worried that it's not going to happen. Bring banger after banger with their monthly updates, and the best is still to come. I, hope I am so. confident the node reveal and ocean focused live streams are going to be some of the best mechanics and gameplay I really am excited we've for ever that. seen in the MMORPG genre. I'm very to date. excited for that. So quell your doubts, my friend. Ashes of Creation is just getting started. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO. And my opinions mean nothing without yours in the comments below. And hey, I just want to say thank you to everyone who joined the Patreon. We hit 100 in the first day. That's a lot. And I Holy genuinely fuck. cannot express how grateful I am to have you. You've truly... That's one thing that, like, a lot of people don't understand about MMOs. Is that, like, the neckbeards aren't gone. They're just waiting. There's a lot of, like, 43-year-old men who collect Magic the Gathering cards that they played EverQuest, and they played a little bit of WoW, and all the games now suck. But if a good game comes out, he will return, and he will play it again. That is the fact. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter what it is, he will come back. If it's a good game. Changed my life. A lot of people like that. I can't wait to use that money on ridiculous costumes for Isn't some of the best upcoming intros. Did somebody order me that one? You'll ever see on YouTube. The cat but girl. Mark, I told you this game was a scam. It's just another live stream of vaporware and no gameplay. True, brother. And to that I say, listen, kid. Me and the patrons are quite literally laughing at you in the comments. I know Pantheon's live stream has been dog war lately and the only reason you know pantheon even exists is because you're quite literally dumb enough to be scammed and you're high on copium i think pantheon looks like shit too to be honest but i, I mean I, I agree with that now if whenever pantheon comes out i'll play it i'll, I'll play the game I, i'll see what it's like right i mean because maybe i'll be wrong maybe it'll be super fun but damn it doesn't look good <laughs>
<laughs> Damn, it really just doesn't look good at all. Holy shit. As, as Sky Fury just went down, that was me. I did that. And so, uh, yeah, it's coming out for sure. I, I mean, I hope the game comes out. Yeah, I mean, like, fuck. I, I really do. I, I hope it's, I hope it's going to be good. Th that's the way I see it. Are we trying to temper? I'm just trying to temper expectations because it sounds too good to be true. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just, it's just a game. Like, I really, like, I'm excited for the game. And it's like, if it's bad, okay, fuck. We'll play WoW, like, whatever to me. I just don't, like, I don't get emotionally attached to this shit, man. It's a video game It's not even out yet. There's going to be, like, the Riot MMO. There's, like, going to be new WoW expansions forever. There's, like, Final Fantasy, Lost Ark. I mean, you know, they're making enough money to keep making content. Like, yeah, Tower Fantasy, new character came out. Like, why do I have to put all my eggs in one basket and fucking be emotionally invested into this one game? And, and like, I have to, like, downplay it in my own mind. What the fuck, man? Like, no, I just want to play the game whenever it's fun. That's it. So, yeah, yeah, it's, even if it's bad, you'll probably get box price content out of it. Exactly. And uh, it's not finished the MSQ before a while. Well, probably not, right? But I can. That's the difference. And I'm not emotionally invested into anything. I just want to have fun. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I think that any game on release is going to be fun because there's, like, a bunch of stupid, cool things coming out. And you just want to see what's going to happen. However... I mean, we'll see what's actually going to happen. We'll see what it's really going to be. Very insecure people making their identity X game player. Yeah, I've got no attachment to this. Do you get emotionally attached to Pikachu? Yeah, but I've had Pikachu for a long time. Right? That's a little bit different. And so they're promising six, ass to, uh, six class decisions? Well, I mean, sure. I mean, if the thing is... I feel like the better, the, the sooner this game gets into alpha where people can play it and talk about it, the better. I think that is so important for the game to actually be out and for people to be able to really talk about it. That's a big thing. Let me see if I can find this other one, okay? Let me link the NARC video that I just got done watching. Uh, where the fuck is it? There it is, yeah. So make sure to give him a sub. The guy makes great content. He's like one of the only like primary ashes of creation uh, streamers. So, um, or content creators. So make sure to give him a give him a sub, give him a watch.